In my last video, we were talking a bit about heave springs and how they affect suspension characteristics, particularly when you start to apply aerodynamic loads. We also discussed how separating the suspension modes in terms of heave, roll, pitch, and warp is beneficial in terms of suspension tuning. Of course, some of my avid viewers in the comments section pointed out that the suspension setup that I drew up doesn't actually allow us to fully isolate and decouple heave and roll. And what I want to talk about in this video is sort of the pinnacle of suspension design for mechanical grip, which is fully mode decoupled suspension systems. And the idea is that I'm going to start with, with a few observations around suspension setups, and I'm going to go and build through to a suspension setup that allows us to fully decouple all four suspension modes. So what I've got here in terms of 3D model is it's the suspension model that we use in the heave spring video, except I've just taken the front, which used the T-bar suspension style setup with the central heave spring, and I've copied that exact setup to the back. So instead of running a, a direct heave spring, we're running the T-bar style heave spring. So we've got the same setup, front and rear. Now to start with, I want to address the question of how we manage the pitch mode and how we can decouple and tune that separately to our other modes. Because on a conventional car, we have no coupling between the front and the rear suspension, so it's impossible to tune the pitch mode by any means other than changing the relative front and rear heave stiffnesses. Because if we change our heave stiffnesses, naturally we have more resistance to the pitch motion, which is of course the front axle rising and the rear axle falling. So as we increase the stiffness through here and here, we're going to end up with more pitch stiffness. So let's say we want a more direct means of tuning this. Well, obviously I need to connect the front to the rear. So what I'll need to do is go through and do something that can connect these two. Now, obviously I don't want to be affecting the other modes. I don't want to be affecting roll. I don't want to be affecting heave. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and anchor to the end points of the T-bar and I'm going to connect a linkage off those. And let's have a look at what this linkage looks like. Basically, what I've done here is I've gone and put a, a T-bar assembly through the center where basically we have another T-bar in the mid and then we have a linkage that goes to the top of each T-bar on each end. And what I've done for clarity is remove the two damper assemblies so you can see how this bar would hook up. So we've got a linkage bar there and there. So when this front axle is placed in heave, we'll end up with this particular section moving back and forth like that. Same as when the rear axle goes in heave, the rear will move back and forth like that. So if you can imagine if the front moves up in heave, what happens is that this particular linkage over here is going to move this way, like that. And then if the rear moves up in heave, the linkage is going to move that way. And what that will do is induce a rotation of this top bar along here. However, if we have the front move up in heave, and the rear move down in heave, what will happen is, is that this rod will move this way, but this rod will also move that way. And so what will happen then is we'll have a rotation around this axis of the unit around this particular pivot. And that is going to actually control our pitch stiffness of the car if we apply more stiffness at the particular pivot down here. So to see what it looks like in pitch, you can see that if I move the front down and the rear up, we're moving the center pivot forward and backwards like that. And that's going to be our pitch motion. While you can see that in heave, we have this top rotation through the top portion of the bar. So we can see that we can actually control the overall car's heave and pitch by adjusting the damping and stiffness at this bottom pivot for pitch and the damping and stiffness of this rotary pivot for heave. So that way we've actually eliminated our old heave springs at each end and we've actually got the heave and the pitch all in one central unit here. So we go one step further and make it so that our T-bar setups have an appropriate uh, roll damper and roll stiffness in them. Then what we can actually do is that we can then control the roll stiffness at each end through that and then we can remove our corner dampers because we've actually gone and got all our modes sorted. So now I've gone through, I've removed my corner dampers and now we have a heave spring unit in the center for the whole car. We have a pitch spring unit in the center, and then we have our roll spring and damper units at either end. But of course, we're missing one key mode here, which is warp. So the way to think of warp is a cross axle displacement. So if you think about what that actuates here, we can follow the load path along there. So we, we have a motion there and we have a motion here. And so that's gonna go through there 
through along across the roll springing here. This also has to go across its roll springing here, then has to go through both the heave and the pitch systems along there. And as a result, we're going to actually get a contribution from each little component on the way through. So we haven't actually split out our warp mode. Now, why does warp matter? Because obviously when, when we tune pitch and heave, we're able to, to tune our ride height characteristics for things like aero, stuff like that quite effectively, in addition to some mechanical functions. Our pitch tuning helps to find some of our load transfer rates under braking and stuff like that. Our roll tuning helps to find some of our grip characteristics in terms of oversteer, or understeer, all that. So we've got pretty much everything we need to tune the car effectively. So why do we care about warp? Well, having high warp stiffness doesn't really contribute anything to the car's overall handling, but what it does do is reduce the overall mechanical grip because it increases normal load fluctuations at the tires. And the more normal load fluctuations we have, the worse our effective coefficient of friction is and the worse our grip is. So the net result is we want to completely get rid of warp. And that's actually really hard to do with a mechanical system. It can be done, but it's very, very complex. Not to mention, we now have a, an area in the center of the car where we've had to run these giant rods along through the entire length of the car. And not only is this heavy, but you have to work out how you package this around the driver and stuff like that. So you can see that this system isn't particularly great. So what can we do? Well, let's have a look at a bit of a different approach, which is to use hydraulics. Okay, so what I've drawn here is I've got four wheels of the car looking down from the top. And so we're gonna say the front of the car is over here, although it's not super relevant. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fit a similar push rod and bell crank system to my previous car setup. Except what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go and instead of putting corner springs and dampers at each corner, I'm gonna go and put a little hydraulic cylinder at each corner. So each one of these cylinders will displace fluid as the wheel moves up and down. So this wheel moves up, this cylinder will have a piston inside it that moves that way and displaces some hydraulic fluid. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in a system that can allow us to, to tune and decouple all our different suspension modes. So to start with, let's decouple the heave motion. Well, heave is when all four pistons are going to be moving up or down concurrently. So if you imagine You've got fluid going that way in all these pistons. So what I'll do is I'll connect all these pistons to one big piston over here. So as fluid moves through all these pistons, it's gonna go and push this particular piston up. So what I'll do there is I'll go and I'll put a big arm here coming out of the piston, and then I will put a spring and damper unit on the arm, like such. And so this spring and damper is going to be our heave spring and damper for the entire car. Now what I need to do is then attack the pitch mode separately. So for the pitch mode, let's imagine we've got fluid moving up and fluid moving down because on the other side, we've got one side going up and one side going down. And that's the motion of pitch. So what I'll do is I'll create another piston over here. And what I've drawn is I've routed in the fluid so that you can see that if the fluid's moving up in here and down from here, so the piston will move up in that axis if there's fluid draining out that way and coming in that way, which is what's gonna happen when we encounter pitch. So as we encounter pitch, this piston is going to move up and down. Then we can go and do the same sort of thing for roll. So you can see that what I've done is I've gone and put the right side, piped in on one side of the piston, the left side on the other. So as the left side moves up and the right side moves down, this piston is going to move. However, this particular setup only defines the, the roll stiffness and damping for the entire car. But we know that we want to be able to vary the roll stiffness and damping front and rear to allow us to change the balance on the car. So we have to run something a little bit different. So what I'll do is I'll go through, make one piston over here for one side, one piston over here for the other side, and then now we have these two pistons that are essentially our roll pistons for the front and the rear of the car. And then what I'll do is I'll make it so that their outputs go on a little lever arm like this, so they're allowed to rotate around our spring and damper unit here. 
And so this spring and damper unit defines the overall roll stiffness for the car. But by moving the, the relative positions of the roll pistons with respect to the spring and damper, we actually vary the roll stiffness front to rear of the car. Because if we move this particular position more this way, what it will do is it will have a shorter moment arm between the, the spring and damper and the piston. And so as that gets closer, more force will proportionally be applied to this piston. And that will mean that with more force applied to it, it will have effectively a higher roll stiffness. So we can adjust our roll bias front and rear by changing their positions on this linkage bar. So we've got the roll stiffness and roll bias sorted. We've got our, our pitch stiffness and damping all sorted. We've got our heave stiffness and damping for the whole car all sorted. And so we're basically back to where we were with the mechanical setup from earlier. But now we need to go back to the problem we had before, which is what do we do about warp? And thankfully, this is fairly easy to solve on the hydraulic system. What I'll do is I'll set up another piston over here. And what I've done is I've done a cross connection where you can see that what I've done is I've passed the, the front right and the rear left to the top here. And I've passed the front left and the rear right to the bottom here. So that when we have a, a cross axle lifting basically, uh, what will happen is that we'll get movement in our warp piston and that will allow us to, to tune the warp. Of course, like mentioned before, we don't actually want the warp sprung. So we're not gonna put any sort of spring on this particular system, it makes no sense. But there are components in the system, specifically the tires, that still need some degree of damping. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll put some form of damper on here, but no spring. And so now we're able to tune and adjust all our modes individually. And we've been able to really successfully achieve this through a hydraulic fully decoupled suspension system where we can adjust the springing and damping in heave, warp, roll and pitch all separately. And of course, there are lots of other tricky things you can do with this system too, where obviously I've drawn this with hydraulic pistons being actuated off bell cranks, but there's nothing stopping you from going and just completely replacing your push rod over here with a hydraulic piston. So you just have a nice long hydraulic piston and then that hooks up to there and then that outputs your fluid from there. So you can really simplify your system by basically just turning it into a direct actuating hydraulic push rod. Now the setup I've drawn here is not quite indicative of how you'd set up in the real world because in reality, you, you'd isolate some of these pistons out to, to get better control of everything, make sure you don't have weird hydraulic fluid crosses and stuff like that. And in reality, you also have to consider the fact that pushing hydraulic fluid through these lines is going to can produce some form of damping coefficient as it travels through the lines, uh, as well as a spring coefficient because what will happen is, is that the line itself will have some degree of flex in it and therefore will contribute to your overall spring rate and you need to compensate for this with whatever spring and damper setup you're running on the outside. So there's a number of constraints like this that you have to work with in the real world. There's also a degree of inertance due to the, the mass of the fluid and the velocity that's traveling as it goes through the lines. So all things like this have to be considered. But overall, it's a really super cool system to consider. And if it wasn't for the prohibitive expense involved in making all these custom cylinders, I'm sure we'd see it on a lot more cars. Of course, I'm not the first to come up with a system like this, and there's a number of Formula student teams that are running this to great effect. One of the cool examples that comes to my mind uh, is AMZ Racing from ETH Zurich. And they've got a really cool setup where they get rid of this warp piston and then they deal with it all with just a damper that's built into their entire roll unit and lever system over here. Overall, their system is really cool. I'll put some links in the description that, that you can follow to see how their system works and see it running in practice because it's super cool and I strongly recommend you check it out. But that is overall how you can get a fully mode decoupled suspension system. Well, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments on what you'd like to see next from me, uh, leave it in the comment section below. And don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel for more like this and don't forget to turn on the notification bell. And hopefully, I'll see you next time.